All right, so we're back. Um, before we get into this, we just have to clear up a couple of things. Um, a lot of people were concerned about why we needed the GoFundMe. It's just the GoFundMe really right now is just a substitute for until things are settled because stuff takes a while and we're both not at work right now. We, there's so many things that the GoFundMe covers right now that you know it it seemed like in the last video we kind of made it feel like that was our main concern but it really isn't the main focus of our last video was just to tell people what happened we didn't think it would blow up as much as it did otherwise we probably wouldn't have like talked about the gofundme in the video itself we would have probably just linked it because we weren't expecting that much support. So we'd like to thank everyone for their support and their concerns, but um, we don't want you guys to worry about any of that because we've got it all covered. We're getting it all taken care of. So now we'll get to the actual, my freaking hair, I'm sorry. The actual main part of the video, which is the Q&A. So the biggest question that has been asked since our original video is how Lauren goes to the bathroom. A colostomy, which is my colon pulled out of my body so I can poop. And I have bilateral nephrostomies. They're tubes that go into my kidneys that drain my kidneys into bags. So therefore that is how I pee, poop, and fart. How is Lauren's mental health since the accident? How is yours? It seems like it would be very hard to deal with. My mental health's good. I, I've, ex I've, I've accepted the accident since, I mean, practically day one, because I, I seen my limbs during the accident in the emergency room up until they put the anesthesia mask on me to make me pass out. So I knew that I was going to lose all these limbs pretty much. So it's it didn't take a real big effect on my mental health. How I, is yours? My mental health, it's good for the most part. I mean, obviously, we both have days where we're just, like, sad. But that's to be expected. But the overall state of my mental health, I'm just, I'm happy that I got a second chance with Lauren by my side and that, I didn't lose him so every time I get really sad about like you know we're not home and we're missing all of these holidays and my birthday and stuff like that with our family I just remind myself you know like it could be worse he could be gone so um how did you guys meet and who made the first move I can't believe that's one of the top liked ones we met through working together at Panda Express she was the counter help and I was the cook Sorry, we had to readjust. I have really sensitive hips, and so the position I was in was just hurting. So he, he wanted me to make the first move, but I definitely told him, like, uh, that's your move to make, and so he made the first move. Even though he survived the accident, is his lifespan shortened? Um. Yes and no. Yeah, they said I was going to die within a month after the surgery and it's been two months after the surgery so it's really hard to tell if my lifespan is shortened or not because they don't have enough case studies of hemicorporectomies in Lauren's condition like a lot of hemicorporectomies are older like war veterans or people with cancer there aren't a lot who are young people in really good condition like his body was in great condition his health was in great condition so they don't have enough case studies on that for the average lifespan of hemicorporectomies to really be applied to him so it's just kind of a time will tell type thing mm -hmm. how did lauren come to terms with his condition um like i said previously i seen my legs and my arm during the accident with my clothes off, so I knew that my legs and my arm was gone, so really it was easy to come come to terms with it once I was fully off the ketamine and every other drug that they had pumping into my body during the sur surgeries. What were your thoughts the first time you saw him after the accident? 
I'm not gonna lie, I thought that they brought us into the wrong room. But when we walked into his room, it was super dark and just so much of the bed wasn't taken up. So much of the bed was just empty. And it was like, it was almost like a toddler looking type sized body was at the top of the bed. And so I like, your tube's caught. I sincerely thought that we were just in the wrong room and then they turned on the lights and we saw Lauren and like he opened his eyes. It was just really dreamlike, like a dreamlike state, like a dreamlike haze. It just, it didn't feel real and it didn't feel real for the first couple of days, but then it was just already like our new, my new reality. He wasn't awake yet, but. Is Lauren going to be in therapy for his mental health? I have denied any therapy that they have tried to offer me. I don't, I've had a therapist before due to job court and I did not see the use in it whatsoever. They basically just use your past against you. So I didn't. And I no. saw in the comments too, a lot of people like suggesting therapies and you know, therapy isn't for anyone. Like if Lauren can find his own ways mentally and to healthily deal with everything that don't include a therapist, then like all the power to him. Like me, I'm probably gonna need a therapist cause I know therapy works for me. But Lauren knows therapy doesn't work for him. How do y'all stay so positive and happy? We don't. Um, there are plenty of times where we just lay together and cry and break down, but we're able to bounce back from it. It's just, we remind ourselves that we're going home soon and we get to start our futures again soon. And I don't know, how do you stay so positive and happy, babe? I still have you. And we still have our two kitties, and we still have a life to live together. That's how I stay happy and positive. Believe me, if she wouldn't have stayed by my side and I would have woken up without her, I probably would not have survived. She, and I've told her this multiple times, she is definitely the reason that I survived. Because waking up after the accident and seeing that she was still kissing me on the forehead and saying I love you really just brought me to terms that this isn't the end and to keep fighting I guess do you want kids yes yeah that's that's a definite yes in fact just before the accident we were talking about how beautiful our kids would be because we both were athletic and we're both smart and Will you press charges or take anyone to court regarding the accident? We're not discussing any of the legalities. I saw a lot of comments on our last video about like us suing the company and I know we're just a bunch of kids, but I promise you guys we have a whole team behind us. Everything's being handled the way it needs to be handled and but we aren't going to discuss any legalities or anything about the company online because that's just between us and the company and we feel like that's not something that pertains to Lauren's story in the sense of what we're shooting for. You know, we're shooting for his story to motivate people and for it not to be about money and legalities. We don't want that part to be part of our online presence. So we really love your guys' concern, but I promise you we have it taken care of and we have the right people that we're working with to make sure that nothing goes wrong. Hey guys, when are you going home? Hopefully on my birthday. That's January thirteenth. The estimated time for us to go home would be January thirteenth, which is right around the corner. Which is right when I turned twenty-one, you guys. How long have y'all been together? About a year and a half, almost two years, roughly. Yeah. Um, because it's really hard because we didn't like make it official on a specific date, like. I used the date that we first started, like, you know, being together as our date, but, like, there was so much more before that that it's so hard to really pinpoint how long we've been us. What are you most thankful for? Each other. Because, like I said, if I didn't have her, I 
wouldn't have a life, so I'm most thankful for her. I'm basically in the same boat. I mean... <laughs> I'm most thankful that we got to start our life again. Yeah. I'm, I'm thankful that we still have a shot at a future. That, like, we can still go home. And we can still see our kitties. And we can still go grocery shopping. And go to the movies. And, you know, I can still hold his hand. Like, the whole time we were in Seattle, all I was thinking about was those little things that I took for granted without even realizing it and I'm just thankful that now every time those little things happen I'll be so aware of them there's gonna be a lot of cuts in this because we have nurses coming in and all all the time and we constantly have to rearrange because it's just it's hard for his body to get comfortable sometimes does everyone visit or are you just with him when we were back home, family always visited, but now that we're here, it's just me. But my mom's coming up for Christmas, so that'll be nice. Mm -hmm. But right now, it's just us. Does anything hurt right now? And there's another one that says, are you in pain? The only pain that I experience is phantom pain. Unless the bed sucks, then my spine and my kidneys will hurt. But other than that, it's just phantom pain in the legs, not even in the arm, just in the legs. And I am sl it, I've noticed the pain has slowly, slowly started to go away over time. So that's a plus. When are y'all getting married? It takes strong love to stick around like that. That is a question for Lauren. When we were back home, I proposed to him and he said no because obviously he had to focus on healing up first but that's a question for lauren we'll be getting married soon we don't know when. basically we want to get over this hump in life before we focus on all of that yes but the proposal has been made does it hurt to know you can't have kids now that was probably the hardest thing that i had to deal with i didn't cry over not having legs or pelvis or the only thing I cried about was not being able to have kids of our own genes. But with how fast the medical field is advancing and stuff, that could maybe be a possibility in the future. So I have learned to deal with it. <laughs> what is Lauren's diet now? I'm on a full diet. I can eat whatever I want. Will you be able to get the care he needs when you get home or is moving closer to his doctor something you are thinking about? Our, so we were living together for over a year before this accident happened. And when we went back home, because in between Seattle and here, we were at our home hospital briefly until we came here for rehab. And in that time, we got a new place that is handicap accessible. Um, and like it's got our two cats there they're registered as emotional support animals as well um and it's completely handicap accessible for him and i mean there's a couple little kinks but those are easy to work out because it's a handicap accessible building anything we need we just have to fill out this form for it to be like renovated um but the nice thing about that is it is literally two blocks away from our hospital so and she will be registered as my care provider yeah, I'll be his caregiver, so I'll be there all the time anyway. And I already know, like, I already know how to do his colostomy stuff, his nephrostomy things, his bandages, his skin checks. Like, they've been training me here as well as him. And then he will also have, like, nursing care for a little bit, but we don't exactly know how that's going to work. What is your guys' favorite thing to do together? Just make funny faces and say shit in a funny way. <laughs> I mean, in our hometown, you can't really do anything but go to the movies or go to the park. So, I mean, my favorite thing that we do together is just like poke and prod and make funny faces and say things in a funny way. Yeah, we're very goofy. Yeah. He calls me quirky all the time, but mm -hmm. um, even before the accident, our favorite thing to do was just sit at home and relax together and just 
be goofy and not have to worry about like being goofy because mm. the only people around were us and we weren't about to judge each other for just being weird mm. does he have any private parts i'm confused i've seen that one a lot as well everything below his belly button is amputated and if that doesn't answer your question then just google hemicorporectomy and that tells you everything that's removed what happened to the driver the driver took off he literally sped off after the accident so i couldn't tell you what happened to the driver oh someone on instagram also asked how he goes to the shower like how he takes a shower how do you take a shower there is a basically like a cot that has holes in it that I lay on and I need one of those handheld shower things and I just bathe myself with that so my hair just looks wild afterwards. I've seen a lot of questions where people are confused about the car situation. The car didn't hit him. It So when bridge construction is done, Half of the bridge is closed off and then the other half, it's like a one lane open and they have lights and they, you know, the lights navigate the two way traffic. So one way goes, light turns red, the other way goes. He was driving the forklift down and the person waiting at the light ignored that he was on this one lane bridge and went forward and basically forced Lauren off the road. He didn't hit him. He didn't run a light or anything, but he saw lauren and you're supposed to always yield to construction workers that's like people who do not follow construction worker rules like those rules are there for a reason those speed limits those lights everything's there for a freaking reason and he just ignored that and he kind of just forced lauren off the road because he needed to be somewhere that couldn't wait so yeah and i'm sure we're gonna get comments saying well why did lauren get out of the way for him blah 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 the side of where he was coming to was the side of where my body entered the vehicle. So if he were to hit me, the car would have smashed me and probably killed me. So that's why I moved out of the way for him because I didn't want to be smashed and killed. And still I ended up smashed, but not killed. <laughs> Basically just construction rules are there for a reason. People need to yield. I actually, since this accident, I have done so much work research and there are so many construction worker accidents that are caused by pedestrians like those rules are there for a reason follow the rules people it could save lives and avoid bad things happening what is the thing you both are looking forward to doing the most when you get out seeing our cats petting our cats not being institutionalized being able to do what we want when we want to do it i'm sorry i love our cats yeah. and being away from them this long they are the sweetest most genuine souls out there and every time we facetime my cousin who's watching our apartment they hear our voices and they don't know where we are and they get super confused and sad and i'm just ready to snuggle them how do we feel about starting our new life we feel great i mean at least we have another chance at it so that's why i feel great because even after the surgery they suspected i was gonna die and not be able to go home ever do anything what is lauren's dream job because i think with a mind like his he can get anywhere he has been so headstrong and brave you are both my inspiration i never had a dream job job going up growing up like even in school you know how they tell you you need to pick out a career and blah 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 i never really could ever find a job or career that I really wanted to do. But due to this accident and whatnot, I'm thinking after all the legalities and everything are settled that I want to start doing real estate. Was it hard to see himself when he got out of surgery? I didn't, after like three days of me being awake, awake, they asked me if I wanted to see myself. I was like, yeah, sure. And I looked right in the mirror and I was like, oh, wow, that's crazy. But it wasn't hard or difficult. And it didn't scare me. <laughs> Where are your parents? Well, our family can't afford to just up and leave and come to Chicago. They're, 
our family is home, but they are also on our phones 24-7, FaceTiming us 24-7, checking up 24-7. Um, but they have jobs, they have lives, they can't just up and leave those and come chill in Chicago for a couple months. Will he be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life? I feel like that's pretty... Obvious. Obvious. Mm -hmm. um, I saw a lot of things asking about like if he'll ever get prosthetic legs and stuff. He can't. He doesn't have anywhere for legs to go. He doesn't have hip bones. He doesn't have a pelvic bone. He He's just a little bulb at the bottom. So that bucket that you saw in the viral video, that's how he'll even, he can't sit up without that. Like right now he's angled and even being at this angle for too long will hurt him. That's why he keeps going down and back up. That bucket in my viral video, that is how he can sit up. That is how he'll be able to sit up for the rest of his life. And unless they come out with some like crazy robo attachments for it that like he can control in some way, he's not going to be able to have legs. His wheelchair will be his new legs. Will he ever have all of his organs back in? <laughs> I think they got confused. His organs are already back in. In the last video, we were talking about how your organs were in bags. If you look at his tummy, you can see the, ooh, hello. You can see the, um, oh no. Okay, that'll work. You can see the scar. His organs are already back in. Mm -hmm. Will you guys celebrate Christmas in the hospital? Sadly, yes. Can you pick him up? In the future, when you go to bed, you might have to. I probably could pick him up, um, but that wouldn't be very safe for his body because he wouldn't have anything supporting that weight down below. Everything back home will be set up to where he can be as independent as possible. So he'll be able to get in the bed by himself. He will have you know, special, like, he'll be in his bucket in the wheelchair, roll the wheelchair up, roll into bed, take his bucket off. He's already able to put his bucket off, on and off by himself, get into his wheelchair by himself. I am merely just support <laughs> and sometimes doing stuff for him because why not? Biggest cri cri Christmas wish? To be home. I think those are basically, like, the biggest questions we've had, a lot of the questions are really about how he goes to the bathroom, and it's... Pretty simple. Yeah, it's... He's got a bag on his colon to poop in, and he's got two bags out of his kidneys to pee in, and you just... You drain them. You just keep an eye on them. You drain them when they start to get full. Everyone, um... A lot of people have been talking about in the viral video his colostomy bag, and how like it needed to be changed and it was gonna explode and like all this stuff. That's just, that was the very first trial of his <clears throat> prosthetic. The hole wasn't cut big enough. His bag was barely full, but because of how it fit in the hole in his uh, prosthetic, it just kind of looked full. ballooned. Mm -hmm. But I promise you guys, we drain it, we clean it, we take really good care of him. The nurses are phenomenal. They've taught me how to do it all, and I obviously am not about to let him just sit in nastiness. So if his bag is full, I drain it. If his bag is uh, used, I change it. I He's clean, I promise. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much it for the Q&A. Um, we're possibly going to be vlogging. Uh, it'll be more me vlogging Lauren doing stuff. He needs to focus more on his rehab than all of this. So if we are vlogging, it will be me doing a lot of stuff for him, me videoing a lot of stuff for him and um, answering a lot of questions so that he can really just focus on getting better. But that way you guys can still be brought along on his journey. But thank you guys all for the support. And we really did not think that this would blow up to what yeah. it has blown up to. And like the support has been tremendous and we're just basic people. We're just regular people. TikTok happened to like our video and we figured why not bring everyone else along on this journey because you know, if, if anything, it just shows people that you can do anything. Mm -hmm. And if that's all that comes out of it, that's all that comes out of it. We really don't care what comes out of it. We just are baffled by 
the mm -hmm. immense amount of support yeah. and we love you guys yes. like honestly so that's about it um hopefully we have another video up in a couple of days with some vlogging stuff i don't know it's gonna take us a while to get these videos down i apologize for the last one it had a couple kinks hopefully this one isn't as bad and hopefully i start getting better at editing and uploading mm -hmm. through the progress because i am fresh to all of this we love you guys thank you guys